Yo! How's it going, everyone? Uh, let me just get set up here. This guy! <laughs> oh, let me find my headphones. Okay, uh, let me go back to Mother Base first. Another day of MGS. Eat, sleep, MGS. Hey, what's up, Connor? Slurm, Pew, how's it going? Hiss Lizard, Chrome, good to see you all. So, we're getting pretty close to the uh, end of Peace Walker, but we still have a bit to go. Second ending, we have to do some Zadornov missions, I think, to get the nuke call, uh, some other tapes, and uh, whatever other shenanigans we want to do, optional stuff, Kaz dates, Paz tapes, maybe some Monster Hunter shenanigans. Um, let's see here. I actually kind of like the way you fight. As much as I hate to say it, it's war that gives us our greatest breakthroughs in science and technology. Let's auto-assign these guys. Hold on a second. Let me just make sure my settings are correct here. Oh yeah, we got the we got the new music. Uh, let's take a look at the files. I don't think DRK did the the Huey letter file, right? Yeah. Did you um give that letter to Doctor Strange, love? Uh, no. Why not? I gave it to you for a reason. It's highly important information. Sorry. I didn't exactly have an opportunity to play postman. Well, next time you see her, you make sure she gets it. Oh, yeah, sure. Better for you if she doesn't. Snake! What? Tell me you didn't read the letter. No, no. You did! <laughs> I mean, you never know what kind of information could affect the outcome of an operation, right? So, I... So you read the letter, after I specifically told you not to. What do you expect people to do when you tell them not to read something? I thought I knew you, Snake. I thought I could trust you. But now I see I was wrong. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry, but I just don't get what you see in her. Well, I wouldn't expect a barbarian who opens other people's private correspondence to understand. Fine, then. Deliver it yourself. Huh? What? No, 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 I, no, no way. I could never... <laughs> uh, you've got a long way to go, Huey. <laughs> there it is. A barbarian. Let's see, how are we on Strange Love's files? Did we do all these? Yeah, it looks like we did. Cecile. Ooh, we have a few Cecile tapes to do. Oh, wow, we have uh, we have all of them to do. Let's go through Cecile's tapes. Did you live in Paris your whole life before coming here? Ah, yes. It is my favorite city. Paris is the world capital of art and culture. It has the latest fashion, the best cuisine, and the most elegant, refined people. The beauty of the Champs Elysees at night is almost unearthly. The name comes from Elysium, the name of paradise in Greek mythology. Heaven, in other words. Hmm. Must be nice for some people. Not for me. Are you saying the cultured life does not appeal to you? I'm saying I never had a chance to lead one. Not that it appealed to me anyway. You prefer war? I don't like war. Life outside heaven just suits me better. Don't lie, Snake. That is a hard way to live. But, if you do ever come to France, 
I will show you around Paris. <clears throat> then you will see what heaven on earth is really like. I don't uh, like war. Uh. Hold on, let's go back to the menu. I think it must be uh, in the in-game options, DRK. I think maybe I need to change the the screen layout in-game. Hey, what's up, Wexford? How's it going? Uh, is there a is there a place in game to change the? Oh, maybe there isn't. It's in the start menu. Hey, what's up, Blood Sense? How's it going, man? It's fine there for the opening logos. <laughs> but all you can see is uh, black background. Um, extras? Screen display. Here we go. That should be more like it. Although that looks a little bit off on stream. Hold on. No, I think that would be right. Okay, hopefully that's uh, better. Maybe you're still seeing like a little black bar. Anyway, I'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that for now. It'll do. How's it going, Blut? What have you been playing recently? Uh, let's keep going with these Cecile calls. Heaven on earth, huh? The only image I have of France is the Foreign Legion. Ah, uh, that, that is how you view France? What do the French think of them? Mm, it is a difficult question. We normally don't think about it so much. Well, critics claim it forces foreigners to take on the most dangerous missions, so French citizens won't get hurt. Mm, you are right. That probably had something to do with why it was created. But I understand that along with service comes benefits, such as French citizenship and permanent residency. Those who join are all given an equal chance, regardless of race, religion, education, social status, or national origin. So it can be a godsend for people from poor countries. Hmm. A way for the have-nots to live a decent life. I guess that's not so different from MSF. Uh... Hold on, these, these black bars are bothering me. I think I preferred it the way it was before. <laughs> I'm going back to change the screen again. I hope uh, this isn't too annoying. If I zoom in one more, it'll be... It'll cut off a bit of the screen though, won't it? Uh, so, so there's no way to avoid cutoff. Yeah, I think maybe I've, I've... I might prefer it just uh, how it was before. So then you don't have any cutoff at least.
Okay, we'll leave it like this for now. Oh, Blood Sense, you've been doing Alan Wake. Yeah, people have been wanting me to play that with the new one coming out. I think FIFA is, uh, is a fan of those games. A few other people have been wanting me to play it. Uh, let's see. All right, Cecile, we'll fully commit to your tapes now. There's one other image I have of France, the national anthem. Ah, La Marseillaise. Not everyone is a fan, of course. The whole, to arm citizens, may an impure blood water our furrows thing, eh? The song was composed right after the French Revolution. Fearing what the tide of the revolution represented, the ruling classes in neighboring countries applied all kinds of pressure on the young government. La Marseillaise became the anthem of the volunteer armies that sought to protect constitutional rule against that pressure. And they couldn't do that without armed force. We, oui, I agree, some parts are a little belligerent. But we must not forget that if it were not for them, France would not be the democracy it is today. Have you ever seen the umbrellas of Cherbourg? A movie? No, never seen it. No? It came out ten years ago. <laughs> Catherine Deneuve. She's so beautiful in it. And the music, the costumes, the colors. Ah. Huh. It takes place in the naval port of Cherbourg. That was a beachhead in Normandy. It is set back when young men were conscripted to fight in the Algerian War. <laughs> The French government called the conflict a public order operation in northern Africa. I was still a little girl then, but I can clearly remember one of my friend's older brothers going off to fight. Yeah, national service is required in France. The war splits up two young lovers. Director Jacques Demy's lyrics and Michel Legrand's music ah, tore at my heart. I will never forget its wonderful melodies. Ah. Are you okay? It changes lives. <laughs> changes fates. War is not a good thing. For some reason, it strikes a chord to hear that coming from someone like you. Are you okay? Cecile and all her gasps and sighs. Uh, yeah, we have all of these to do. Okay. Another movie. Day of the Jackal. I've seen this one. I haven't seen Umbrellas of Sherberg. Day of the Jackal is pretty good. Speaking of the Algerian War of Independence, you ever hear of the Day of the Jackal? Ah, you mean the novel that was made into a movie last year. The OAS, a militant French underground group, plots to assassinate de Gaulle, hiring a hitman known as the Jackal. Readers know that de Gaulle was not killed, but it is still so exciting. If someone was going to try to eliminate me, I would hope they would be as thorough as the Jekyll. To know everything about me, without me suspecting a thing. Oh, yeah? Hmm. I wonder if my birds feel the same way. I wonder. France conducted its first successful nuclear test in the Algerian Sahara in 1960. A lot of French scientists took part in the Manhattan Project. They defected to America to escape wartime occupation. Correct. And once the war was over, they returned to France and continued their own atomic research. President de Gaulle did not want to have to rely on the American nuclear umbrella for protection. Thus making France the world's fourth nuclear power. Some say the test success pacified the Algerian rebels. The civil war was undoubtedly held in check, but never have I equated nuclear weapons with peace.
France has produced many philosophers over the years. Descartes, Bataille, Sartre, Baudrillard. Yeah, I'm familiar with Sartre myself. He called Che Guevara the most complete man of the century, didn't he? Smart guy. He does tend to sympathize with the left. And what else do you know about him? That's it. You know nothing else? Nope. Ooh la la. The man is one of the giants of existentialism, you know? Existentialism? Uh, I've been meaning to look into that. Nothing more dangerous than sneaking in without first securing an exit. <laughs> no, existentialism. <sighs> Sometimes I wonder if my English is not better than yours. Sorry, I'm just not into philosophy. <laughs> ah, is that so? I would imagine it might really enrich your life. I'd rather take action now than spend time thinking about what we are or how we're supposed to live. I guess you could say, I live my philosophy. Interesting. That sounds like something Sartre would say. Yeah? He says we are born with no defined nature, and that we are free to make ourselves what we wish. Free? So he was one of those devil-may-care kind of guys, huh? No. Actually, he meant that because we are free to create our own life, we must take full responsibility for our actions. Man is condemned to be free, is how he put it. Condemned to be free? But then, others will take it upon themselves to define who you are. I've been feeling that way lately. I keep telling people to call me Snake, but nobody seems to listen. Satra also says, hell is other people. Hell? Well, we are outside of heaven. Do you have an interest in the visual art, Snake? Not really. Please, no deep conversation. But you have heard of Picasso, yes? Yeah, I've heard the name. Sadly, Monsieur Picasso, co-founder of Cubism, passed away in the south of France last year. <clears throat> France was his home, you know. Huh? I thought he was born in Spain. Do you know his full name? <laughs> Pablo Picasso. Anyone would know he's Spanish with a name like... Huh. Shows what do you know. What do you mean? Okay, here we go. <gasps> Pablo Diego Jose Francisco de la Palo Juan Nepomucino Maria de los Remedios Cipriano de la Santissima Trinidad Ruiz y Picasso. <sighs> what do you think? <laughs> that was his full name. Still, I don't see how... A master of modern art. A genius who collected over 100,000 works in various styles, spending the greater part of his life in France. The man is a part of our culture. Yeah, that kind of stuff is of limited use in my field. But back to the point, Picasso was Spanish, right? Or am I missing something? Hmm. He wasn't French, right? Right? <sighs> Cecile. <sighs> what difference does it make? It does not matter if he was from Spain or from Mars. Picasso is Picasso. It does not change the fact that he lived in France, nor does it take away from his monumental legacy. Why do you care so much about where he was from, anyway? Whatever happened to the sans frontier part of Militaire sans frontier? Oh, you started it. France was his name. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, France was his name. Tell me, Snake, do you ever put sweets in your rations? Never thought about it before. Why? Ah, I simply love them. French sweets are très délicieux. Everyone knows crepes, but there are also profiteroles, éclairs, madeleines, financiers. Then there's tartatin, and you can't forget savarin. Oh, and milpule, crepes, blancmange. Yeah, you already mentioned crepes. Ah, soufflés, croquembouche, cannelle, florentine, queen amagne, peach melbas. <sighs> Finished. Ah, and macaroons. I love those the most. Macaroon Parisian are the best. They are so cute and colorful, and they contain meringue, so they melt right in your mouth. Wow. I would no idea macaroons were that popular in France, too. What do you mean in France, too? Macaroons are those coconut-flavored cookies, right? Oh, excuse you? Macaroons <laughs> contain almond powder, 
Not coconuts. Don't they have peanuts in them? I've had them in Japan a few times. I thought they were called macarons. <gasps> macarons? Some cheap imitation, I am sure. French macarons have a long and distinguished history. They date back to the 16th century when Catherine de' Medici of Florence married into the French royal family. The story goes that her patissier shared the recipe after they arrived. That is a history of over 500 years. So, they're originally from Italy then. Uh, well, I... Don't macarons come from Italy too? <laughs> Look, I do not really think... Keep in mind, macaron is almost identical to macaroni. Well... That settles it. I cannot believe this! To associate macaroons with macaroni? You, Monsieur Miller, are an insensible oaf. Hey, hey <laughs> why am I the bad guy? Come on, Cecile, wait! Cecile! <sighs> <laughs> Snake is just left alone. For those of you that don't know, DRK probably mentioned it earlier, but uh, Cecile is based on a real person. Very loosely based, I would imagine. Uh, a woman who worked for Konami France, who Kojima became friends with. She was uh, part of the PR department or something. Um, and yeah, Kojima uh, promised that he would include her in his, in his next game. So I think a lot of this is, par well, partially designed to poke fun at the real Cecile. You know, just creating this uh, sort of extravagant stereotype. <laughs> Probably is a way to uh, poke a bit of fun. She uh, she still works with him now, actually. I remember, she, I remember seeing her name in the credits for uh, Death Stranding. So I guess she doesn't work for Konami anymore? I don't know. Hello? Snake? Mon chéri? You've been drinking, Cecile? <sighs> Can't you please do something about this pest? Who? Oh. Monsieur Miller! Uh, what's he done now? Wine. Wine? He said he thought the soldiers might tire of having beer all the time. So he's brought in some wine instead. And then he gave me a bunch. Well, that was nice of him. But the past two years have been bad for French wine. Perhaps it is the bad weather we have had. But whatever the case, I told him the last thing you want to be drinking right now is French wine. Well, California and Chile have good wine too. But then he goes and stocks the pantry with nothing but French wine from 72. <coughs> the stuff is a disaster. Then he says, come on, Cecile, have a taste of the old country. <sighs> I had a terrible feeling about it. So I decided just to taste it at first. And then again. And then a few more times. <laughs> Took one for the team, huh? But when you do a tasting, don't you usually spit the wine out? But bottle after bottle, nothing but garbage! Absolute garbage! <laughs> <gasps> Not one half-decent bottle in the whole lot! Test of the old country, he says! Sorry to hear that. Ugh, I cannot believe this! What will we do with all this wine? The guys aren't too picky when it comes to taste. Ugh! You sound just like Monsieur Miller. Huh? When I complained, he simply said, As long as it gets the job done. <sighs> you people are such culinary savages. Allez, tu vous fais voir. <sighs> Somebody take me back to Paris. Please. <sighs> I, uh... I think you've had a little too much, Cecile. <laughs> hey, what's up, Clapper? A garbage! Absolute garbage! 
You people are such culinary savages. How are you enjoying Mother Base so far? Ah, it is wonderful. Good to hear. I was worried someone as cultured as you would find the plant a little uncouth. Uncouth? Ah, you've got albatross and frigate birds and terns and tropic birds. Seabirds I have never had a chance to see in France. Oh, well, uh, great. I'm sorry. I know I should not spend all day chasing birds. Is there anything I can help with? I appreciate the offer, but I'm not sure what I could ask you to do. Well, I'm certainly not cut out to shoot a gun. Cecile, where'd you learn to move through the forest like that? The birds weren't scared of you at all. Becoming one with the forest is the very essence of bird watching. They want to behave naturally if they sense a human nearby. And that can really affect your observations. I see. Kind of like scouting, then. I am also good at spotting birds from a distance, tracking them based on the tiniest of clues, and being aware of my surroundings. You're starting to sound even more like a scout. The only way to find a bird is to think like a bird. Now, think you can find a place for me? Yeah. You seem like a very, how do I put this, uninhibited woman. You think so? I am no different from other Parisian women. Not since May 1968. May 1968? The general strike that almost brought down the president? Right. But it was more than just a strike. It started with the student movement at Strasbourg University in 66. They did not want anything from the country but instead sought reform at the school. That helped ignite a fire in the hearts of scores of dissatisfied young people. And the movement spread all over France. It was more than just opposition to Vietnam and the de Gaulle administration. People also called for free love and the breaking away from other old values. Looking back, I am not sure what the main goal really was. But whatever the case, it was more of a young people's movement than a strike or a protest. So, it was like the hippies or something? In some ways, perhaps. But we weren't blinded by mysticism, nor did we seek a return to nature. I see. So, while they wanted to retreat to their closed communes... We tried to change the world. And in doing so, we learned that when everyone comes together, it can be done. You had a lot more success. In America, hippies have just become a social problem, while I hear Japan's student movements crashed and burned. I wonder what was different. Good question. I'd like to know myself. All right, let's uh, do some Zadornov missions or something, shall we? You have taken such good care of me since you saved me from El Colibri. I want to return the favor. Just wait until you're healed up. Then we'll talk. I appreciate that, but you need all the help you can get. It might take a while for me to heal completely, but I'll be fine once I'm on my feet. Put me in a combat unit. I'll pull my weight. I wouldn't expect any less from a Sandinista Commandante. <sighs> Enough flattery. But seriously, it does not feel right for me to be sitting here while my compas are out risking their lives. One thing's for sure. Having you out in the field would be a big boost to Sandinista morale. Of course, our ultimate goal is still the overthrow of Somoza. But until we get ourselves back in order, we will follow your lead, wherever it takes us. Glad to have you on board. Amanda. You getting used to Mother Base? Yes. It is heaven compared to living in the mountains. We are no longer constantly on the run from La Guardia or mercenaries. Some of the new guys we recruited used to be mercenaries. We are getting along. It was difficult at first. But once you talk to them, you realize we've got plenty in common. I see. Good to hear. We may be enemies, but we are all still human beings. La Cia soldiers, La Guardia... The same goes for the people of America. 
What's gotten into you? Mi viejo got involved with drugs in order to scrape together money for La Revolución. He did whatever the KGB said, all for Nicaragua, or so he told himself. But I realize now, in the end, all he did was help poison young people of America. Yeah. I have made up my mind. Even when I leave Mother Base and return to La Revolución, I will never turn to drugs, nor will I look to the KGB for help. If we topple Somoza using the KGB and drug money, we will lose the people's hearts. So... You're choosing a different path from your father. I still respect him, but I will not do things the way he did. Well, I'm sure Chico will be glad to hear that. Chico is a grown soldier now. I could not face him otherwise. Well said, Amanda. Those are the words of a true Comandante. Stop. I was inspired by the greatest Comandante I have ever known. Boss. <sighs> <laughs> It's interesting how that parallels uh, Snake's arc in this as well. She's the inheritor of her father's legacy, similar to uh, Snake and the boss. But in the end, she goes her own way. Like, uh, like Snake throwing away the bandana. I have a favor to ask you, Snake. Name it. I want you to give me a job here. I want to help out. You sure? You just went through a hell of a time. You should probably take it easy until you're settled. Thank you. But there must be something I can do. You would not want me near a gun. But I am a decent cook. Now there's a skill we can use. Put me on the mess hall team. I think I can handle it. Once I get used to it, I will even add in some Costa Rican recipes. Sounds like a plan. Okay, let's see where we are with the uh, main missions. It's the doorknob. We just uh, we haven't done uh, any of these yet. Let's we won't we won't go through all the doorknob missions. We'll just wait until we get the new call. Then uh, then we'll switch saves. Do some extras. Then second ending. Has tapes, all that stuff. Snake, Zadornov has escaped custody. Find him. Stealth. the doorknob and bring him back here with Fulton recovery. Freeze. Always love how these levels look at night. Really nice. The kind of glow that it has, the moonlight glow. Thank you for the kiss, Alex. I appreciate it. Yeah, Shailene, I would wait until the Master Collection gets patched at least. So you know you're getting something decent. Land a headshot. Thank you. The MGS HD collection is not perfect by any means. But it's uh, in better shape right now than the Master Collection. But with some patches, the Master Collection might be uh, a better idea to pick up. 
I mean, you're always going to have those control issues, but on PC with mods... PC with mods is probably going to be the best way to play after a while. But yeah, I'd wait around, you know, so... Who knows? Who knows how long it'll take to get properly patched as well. They really need to get that analog sorted out in MGS1. My god. Is Doorknob ever down here? I feel like the last few times I've played this, he's never been over here. Fulton recovery subject confirmed on board helicopter. Was the last time I hung out with DRK? Never. I've never met DRK in person. <clears throat> really? Yes. We live uh, far apart from each other. <laughs> Oh my god. I wasn't actually in that stroller at MGS Con. No, that was all a lie. Fulton recover. We could do the marathon together in the same house. That would probably be more of a pain in the ass than how we do it now. Is he down here? He's going to be at the very end. I wonder in this first one, is he always at the very end? I think some couple of these are like fixed where he'll always be in the same spot. houses are a thing, right? That's what all the millionaire streamers do. They get streamer mansions. Fulton recovery helicopter is complete. Freeze. <gasps> Here he is. <laughs> I 
I didn't mean to knock him out straight away. Try using Fulton recovery on him. Yeah, we can't wake him up. Head for the recovery zone. We'll pick you up there. <laughs> Something about streamer houses seems shady. I, I don't think they're shady. I think it's just, you know, a bunch of streamers renting out a house together. It sounds kind of messy to me. me. It wasn't hard. What are you up to anyway? Just going for a stroll. Kaz, I've got Zadordov returning home. Acknowledge, Snake. There's something I need to discuss with you, boss. Get to the point, Kaz. We recovered the nuclear warhead that was loaded onto Peace Walker from the bottom of Lago Kolsibolka. What? Warheads are radioactive, even if they're relatively stable. If we just left it there, it would contaminate the lake, or fall into the hands of terrorists. Creating another crisis. Right. So while the White House is figuring out how to cover its ass, I thought we'd take some precautions. What did you have in mind? Load it onto Zeke. What? What else would we do with it? Zeke is our deterrent. To protect ourselves from nuclear attack, we need a nuclear weapon ourselves. Ah. Uh... Of course, if you're not on board, we could always dispose of it. But it won't be easy getting another nuke. This is a golden opportunity. We could always get rid of it later. Load it onto some fishing boat and leave it out in the middle of the ocean. No one would ever know it's there. But if you want to get rid of it, boss, we'll get rid of it. No, don't. As long as there are nukes out there, we need one ourselves if we're going to be a world power. I knew you'd see it that way, boss. So as long as we stand apart from nations, we need something to put us on equal footing. In a way, MSF is a country itself. And we just became the world's seventh nuclear power. Nuclear power. Ah, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's all gonna work out fine. Okay, I guess we'll switch saves. Snake. Zid Let me just check our tapes again. When you know, Snake, you're right. As long as we're soldiers without borders, we're going to be a target. We need our own deterrent. Yeah, we're going to be stepping into a lot of different conflicts as we roam the world. Each one unique, and with its own set of geography, ideologies, and politics. If we're going to intervene in those kinds of situations, we need the threat of a Metal Gear. Unless we want to end up like Che Guevara did in Bolivia. Huh, well said. Our army without borders doesn't have a land to call home. We're nomads. Wanderers. What we need now is a sheepdog to guard our flock. Right. Maybe it's not the way the boss would have gone about it. But there are places in this world that need us, and soldiers that need MSF. And as long as we're needed, we'll keep on moving. Ours is a journey that never ends. We're the real Peace Walkers. The new plan is a hex type. That gives it more surface area than previous types, and also makes it easier to plan expansions. We're gonna make this place huge. Hex, huh? Like a beehive. Nothing wrong with that. They say the honeycomb design is one of the strongest. I hear they're even thinking of using it in tank armor. Good enough for me. I'll see about finding us some worker bees. Appreciate it, boss. By the way, Kaz, who do you think's our queen bee? Good question. I was thinking maybe Poss. Hmm. I was thinking Strangelove. Well, I can see that. 
Or maybe Cecile. On second thought, I might go with Amanda. How about this snake? We'll have an army of queen bees. Sure. Why not? Okay, let's switch. Now that we got the new call, that's the last thing we need from new game. So now we can switch to our completed file where we have all the other stuff unlocked. Well, given that we're right here on dates with Kaz and Paz, I guess we'll do these next. <laughs> then we'll go through the Paz diary. Snake, the sunsets are so pretty here. Are you feeling okay, Kaz? Yeah, I mean, I've got MSF business to think about and all. And sometimes it's nice to just sit and watch the sunset, you know? Ah, uh, yeah. Snake, um... Would you be up for going to the coast to watch the sunset? Just the two of us? Let's do it. Tuxedo or swim trunks? I love the beach. I love the beach. What do we have here? We get different reactions for what we say here. This is kind of like dating sim mechanics. There's an affinity system. If we say the right things, we get more points with Miller. The more points we get, the higher rank we get. So if you want to get a higher rank, you need to say the right things. I can feel them. Guess it's time to launch some fireworks. You dish it out. I can take it. That's Snake making that sound, by the way. That's coming out of Snake's mouth. Those, that uh, that's one of the Monster Hunter sounds. Let's see how he reacts to that one. I'll be sure to notify your next of kin. I'll be sure to notify your next of kin. Uh, 
Yeah, I remember the Paz one. She she says how she comments on how she doesn't have any family or something like that. She gets sad. Or is she actually happy with that one? Feel the power within me. I'm not sure if I've ever seen the reaction to this one. I'm still planning on doing Silent Hill 2 on Halloween, yeah. to hide start talking <laughs> no skeletons in my closet start talking okay okay there's one thing I never told you start talking you were always my start talking I got nothing to hide <laughs> perfect angle start talking <laughs> No skeletons in my closet. Damn, it takes a while to choke him out. Not that kind of guy. I guess a little fun and games never hurt anyone. <laughs> Snake. <laughs> what exactly do you plan to do with Monsieur Miller? Stop it. I'm not that kind of guy. I thought Miller was your friend. He is a very good friend. <laughs> what you two choose to do with your time is up to you. But I am not impressed with knocking someone out to take advantage of them. Yeah, you just take advantage of them. Strange love. Stop it. I'm not that kind of guy. I don't think I'll ever understand you two. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, why why so angry? <laughs> Snake. <laughs> now we can't kill him. <laughs> He likes it. He's happy. I've been waiting for you. It's kind of funny. And the date with Paz, she is not happy if you, uh, you know, strangle her or try to beat her up. 
He's not thrilled at all, but Miller loves it. I've been waiting for you. We can even break his glasses if we punch him enough. Whoa! <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't fucking hold. <laughs> Whoa! Okay. Whoa! You hear that crack? That was his glasses. Is he still happy? Yeah, it's pretty easy to get the high rank with Kaz. He's he's happy about a lot of stuff. Every time we get one of those hearts, our our affinity increases. Meow, 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 meow. I feel the power within me. Me too, Snake. I'll be sure to notify your next kid. MSF is the only family I've got. Oh. Maybe it was Kaz's dialogue I was thinking of. I'll pick up your bones when I'm done. You do that. <laughs> you dish it out. I can take it. Okay, then. Here I go. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I forgot about that. Amazing. Maybe we were meant for each other. You dish it out. I can take it. Okay, then. Here I go. Out. I can take it. Okay then, here I go. Well, I want to see if we can trade. You nice out. Pass. I can take it. Nice okay then, pass. here I go. <laughs> Fuck. You should have a heaven stick. Whoa! You should out. I can take it. Out. I can take it. Okay then, here I go. I give up. I've been waiting Missile. for you. Missile. Yeah, I don't think we'd survive that. Oh, oh nice. There's so many unique reactions to these uh, lines. Rocket piece. You, you're kidding, right? Boss means you. Cool. Hydra. I can feel him. I'm feeling your vibes, boss. <laughs> I guess it's time to launch some fireworks. You, you're kidding, right? Kept you waiting, huh? Kept you waiting, huh? Can't wait any longer. Yeah, and if you do the Monster Hunter scream, you knock them back. You blow them back. <laughs> meow, 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 meow. You dish it out. I can take it. Okay then. Here I go. And once your affinity gets high enough, he will even pose for you, B and B style. Maybe we were meant for each other. Make sure you get a good shot of my muscles. Make sure you get a good shot of my muscles. Uh, oh, let's get you away from 
Nice packs. Whoa! Get him away from that rock. <laughs> Make sure you get a good shot of my muscles. Oh, cool, you can really see his eye properly in, in this pose. Make sure you get a good shot of my muscles. <laughs> wow. Make sure you get a good shot of my muscles. Now we're getting the liquid pose. Love the, the dramatic sound effects as well. The clenching of the fist. And when he comes out of the pose. Wah! Just like liquid. Make sure you get a good shot of my muscles. Oh dear Jesus. <laughs> what a pose. A Greek god. <laughs> Take me to heaven, Snake. <laughs> I'm his backup dancer.
Glad to be with you, boss. <laughs> All right, what rank did we get? S rank, of course. It's very easy to get an S rank with Kaz. What were they even doing in that box? God only knows. It's a mystery. How's Paz doing? Okay, so far. Still shocked about being lied to by Zadornov. But she's actually getting along great with the crew here at Mother Base. Really? That's good to hear. Still, it's gotta be depressing for a girl her age to be cooped up on an offshore plan all day. Even if it is only temporary. I bet she'd love it if you took her out somewhere once in a while. Uh, we go in with the uh, with the swim trunks again. I love the beach. I love the beach. I love making this as disturbing as it can possibly be. <laughs> Fucking Michael Myers here. <laughs> Why are you doing like that? What? Oh, then she stops once she gets a certain distance away. See, she likes it. She's just pretending. Did you come here to swim? It is too dangerous. What? Why are you so scared? I'm gonna get you. Ah, no place to hide. I'm gonna get you. See? You can't deny it. Admit to your true feelings. Possible to get this kind of ending with Kaz? No, Kaz loves when you show up naked.
Uh, if we show up in a tuxedo, Paz will not get upset. She just doesn't like when we, uh... When we show up naked. Oh yeah, I guess if you get his... If you bump into Kaz enough, he will leave. Okay, okay. I'm not sure if I've seen that before, actually. Maybe we'll go back and do that. Will he also leave if you just lower his affinity enough? Or do you have to bump into him? Well, let's go, uh, let's go back to Kaz. Hey. Bumping is the fastest way, okay. Ugh. I've been waiting for you. Paz is not an underage schoolgirl, she's 46 years old. What's your problem? You looking to get punched? Ugh. What's your problem? You looking to get punched? Ugh. What's your problem? You looking to get punched? Ugh. Ugh. What's your problem? You looking to get punched? I misjudged you, Snake. <laughs> Kaz! Hey, Kaz, come back! Kaz! Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Owner, does he have any variants on that dialogue? Ugh. What's your problem? You looking to get punched? Ugh. What's your problem? You looking to get punched? Ugh. What's your problem? You looking to get punched? Ugh. What's your problem? You looking to get punched? I misjudged you, Snake. <laughs> Okay, let's do a proper date with Paz. Tuxedo. Oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> Nozka with the 40, thank you. Panda, what's up? Power bad. Power leads to war. I'll pick up your bones when I'm done. And then... And then... You should out. I can take it. You do not like being with me? Oh, damn, we don't have, uh... The right stuff equipped for this date. Big 
Snake? Missile! What is it, 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 Snake? Rocket, peace! In the name of peace, peace! Rocket peace. In the name of peace, peace. <laughs> Kept you waiting, huh? No, it is okay. Hainara! Knock Paz out, can we? <laughs> Creep. Yeah, I didn't think you could. Paz, I'm sorry. Don't walk away. I wanted to see if there were any reactions if you lie down on top of her like with Kaz, but no, I don't think you can get her on the ground like that. Um, I think I'm happy enough with that Paz date. You know, you can just do you can do the same thing and level up the affinity and get her to dance to the same song. <clears throat> oh, you can get her to sleep with the correct voice line. I wonder, do we have that on this save? Probably not, right? Damn, do they... Do, and does the, does the support team have... Uh, are there unique lines then if you lie on top of her? Oh my god. I don't think I've ever seen that. They do? Jesus Christ. Some other time. No, we don't have that save. Alright, let's do tapes. Mother base. Now my real trial begins. The doorknob was paying my room, board, and tuition, but he has since been captured. I told the man that with no more money from the KGB, I could no longer afford school. He bought my story, and when I said I would be willing to work, he took pity on me and let me stay. For some reason, Miller really pled my case. That was helpful. But the man is still a fool. His men are no better. They think their training makes them strong. But that kind of strength is nothing in the face of true power. And better yet, they wait on me hand and foot, believing I am just a schoolgirl. Looks like I won't be working too hard after all. Just today, 
while scouting out the living quarters. I saw a group of them in the corner of the deck making a fuss. Going over for a look, I saw they were feeding a kitten. A bunch of grown hard men, and they are the ones acting like schoolgirls. Look, isn't he cute? What is wrong with them? Disgusted, I just nodded and smiled. I must stay in character after all. I indulged their chit chat for a few moments. Then one of them asked me to give the thing a name. They had just taken it from its mother. I named it Nuke. I improvised some nonsense about how our compassion for living things can help prevent wars. The men gave me a little fish. I held it out in my palm and the kitten happily ate it up. What a pathetic, feeble creature. It sickens me. Today, Chico invited me to go fishing with the soldiers. I suppose finding one's own food does have its merit, but I prefer not to be involved in such a degrading task. And their prattling on about fishing being fun is nonsense. I'm not here to find playmates. Nevertheless, distasteful as it was, I went along in order to maintain my cover. Chico thrust a fishing pole into my hands, and we went up onto the deck where several soldiers had gathered. They welcomed us warmly. With so few women aboard Mother Base, I'm treated like a princess. No one suspects I am neither a teenager nor a student. It was nice and sunny, with a gentle breeze and waves. As I cast my line and waited for a bite, the soldiers began to ask me all sorts of questions. As always, I answered according to our predefined scenario, feigning a smile. As I sat there feeding them lies, the fish began to bite, and the soldiers began to focus on their prey. Chico had his bait stolen by a fish, and got so angry that he stood up and nearly fell into the sea. Everybody laughed. It almost made me want to join in too. At some point, I got a bite myself. The instant after I felt that first gentle tug, the fish yanked the line with astonishing strength, and I let out a cry of surprise. I thought he was going to be huge. It was my first time fishing, and I was a bit flustered, so the soldier beside me helped by supporting the pole from behind. Reel it in, they shouted. I nodded, turning the handle as fast as I could. I wondered what kind of fish lived below the surface, and thought back to the deep sea dives I had to do as part of training. Those were difficult days. But I remember finding the multicolored fish gliding through the water incredibly soothing. After a hard fight, I pulled it up. To my surprise, it wasn't even half a vara, rather anticlimactic. But I wasn't doing it for fun, so I wasn't the least bit disappointed. Nuke was hovering nearby with an expectant look on his face, so I gave the fish to him. All in all, a thoroughly wasted day. Preparations are coming along nicely. No one suspects me of being the one to let Zadarnov out of his cell. Today, Amanda and I taught Cecile how to make gallo pinto. It is a simple home-cooked dish consisting of black frijoles mixed with arroz. It is well known throughout Central America, not just in Costa Rica. So it is no surprise that a Nika like Amanda would be good at making it. But I was raised in the States from a very young age and can hardly even remember my mother's gallo pinto. Having to make chit-chat with that clueless bird lover and this so-called revolutionary was excruciating. And, clueless or not, I wanted to be especially careful around Cecile, the one who actually recorded that tape. Thankfully, Miller and his men seemed to believe I mistook the tape I found for one my friend made. In any case, one can never be too careful. Anyway, the three of us minced garlic and herbs, then cooked them in a pot with frijoles we'd soaked overnight. While waiting for them to cook, we sauteed onions and arroz in a frying pan. Cecile worked the frying pan according to Amanda's directions, but seemed a bit glum. She does have a knack for cooking, though. She is French, after all. We added water to the pan and watched the arroz begin to steam. 
While we waited, Amanda shared memories of her mother with us. They had been separated because of Simosa, but the taste of her mother's cooking was still fresh in her mind. When the frijoles were ready, we drained the water, stir-frying them with the rest of the vegetables. Quite a complicated process for home cooking. Nonetheless, it kept them occupied. The longer we sat and talked, the greater the chance of my arousing their suspicions. With women, it is not enough to just bat your eyelashes and giggle. It takes a lot of effort to divert attention. When the arroz was done cooking, we folded it into the frijoles and added salsa, stirring the mixture as it simmered. At this point, for some reason, the conversation turned to romance. Why does it have to be that way whenever women get together and chat? Cecile fancies herself to be well-versed in such matters and gave Amanda all sorts of advice. It was harmless enough, until, to my irritation, she began pestering me whether there was anybody I liked. Not right now, I said, trying to dodge the question. But she pressed on. It's Snake, isn't it? I gritted my teeth and played it coy. Maybe. Cecile nodded and giggled. He is pretty sexy, isn't he? What a ditz! It's all I can manage to just survive. The thought of romance has never once crossed my mind. I have no interest in that kind of man. Soon enough, a rich aroma began to fill the room. The gallo pinto was ready. Nu came over and rubbed up against our legs, looking for a handout. Unfortunately, it was not the kind of food a cat would like. We let a few of the soldiers have a bite, and then headed off to the mess hall. The home-cooked flavor we'd achieved was a big hit with the men of MSF. Not that we are trying to impress them or anything. Even I could manage a dish like that. Snake enjoyed it too. Let me make this absolutely clear. I have no interest in that man. Football, or soccer as it is known in the States, is extremely popular here. It has not caught on yet in the U.S., but it has legions of rabid fans all across Latin America. These fans can get so rowdy that it is commonly believed El Salvador and Honduras went to war in 1969 over scuffles in a soccer match. In reality, tensions between the two countries were already high. The match was merely one of the sparks that set them off. But these people are so passionate about this sport that the story seems plausible. Predictably, many of the soldiers here are fans. They have apparently divided themselves into Costa Rican and Nicaraguan teams and started playing each other. To play, you need a ball and two goals. The R&D team built and set up simple goals on the deck. I had absolutely no interest, but Chico insisted that I come and watch. It was not a proper match by any means. The pitch was not even regulation size. But the players and spectators alike got pretty excited. They banged empty cans and shouted cheers through the handmade megaphones. It almost felt like carnival. Huey, the referee, blew a whistle to start the match. The soldiers' training has left them in excellent physical shape. But they lacked the honed skills of professionals, and their play was quite rough. Midway through, one of the men collided with another. They started shouting at one another, but Huey stepped in. I thought we had forsaken our countries, become one with the earth, he said, quoting Snake. We are not competing for national pride here, and we are not fighting for the good of any one country. This is not a war. Soccer is a peaceful sport, am I right? The soldiers nodded. They know the pain of war, and they share Snake's vision. Perhaps that is why all this resonates with them. Team Costa Rica was down a man, and somehow, I was picked to fill in. Costa Rica had the advantage up until that point. I suppose Huey wanted to keep it balanced. The soldiers agreed with Huey's call. Maybe the Costa Rican players felt an even matchup would be more fun, too. I could not be bothered to run at first. But chasing the ball out there in the hot sun, I was soon drenched in sweat. Before long, I found myself actively seeking out the ball, partially out of desperation. I picked up a loose ball deep on the opponent's side of the field. Even though he's Nicaraguan, Chico cheered me on, yelling, 
go for it, shoot! I launched the ball as hard as I could, only to have it blocked by the keeper. Disappointment only increased my determination. In the end, I didn't score a single goal, and Costa Rica gave up its lead. It was really close, though. We congratulated each other on a good match and sprawled out in the shade on the deck, exhausted. The ocean breeze felt so nice on my sun-soaked body. Nuke came over. It is one of his favorite spots and stretched out next to me. And together, we watched fluffy white clouds drift lazily across the clear blue sky. It was lovely out today, so I decided to sun myself in a lounge chair up on the deck when strange love came up to me. Despite the heat, she was in her usual long sleeves and pants. I waved at her. She looked away and mumbled, Hello there. Fancy meeting you here. I asked if she needed anything, feeling her eyes creeping up and down my body like she was savoring it. Finally, she swallowed and said, You have such beautiful skin. Bewildered, I shook my head and said, No, not at all. I had heard rumors that she was a lesbian. But she couldn't be after me, could she? She continued to stare and said, No, it is beautiful. But you must not let yourself get so tanned. And then she took my hand in hers. What is wrong with a little son, I asked, trying to cut the conversation short. But she shook her head violently. No, you mustn't. A young lady should take better care of her skin. She was acting strangely now, as if aroused. She lectured me on the perils of tanning, how it ages skin, causing wrinkles and spots, and in the worst cases, even skin cancer. I knew already that tanning could cause spots, but I thought only pale-skinned Anglo-Saxons had to deal with that. Having a scientist tell me it causes aging, though, that spooked me a little. If I am to keep playing the teenager, I will have to start paying more attention to my skin. Sensing my anxiety, she took a small tube from her pocket. She said it was the sunscreen she always used. She told me to keep it. I didn't know what to say. I was more than happy to take it, but exactly what were her intentions? Was she merely being nice, or is she really into me? Either way, there was no reason to refuse, I suppose. I have undergone training. An out-of-shape woman does not pose any real threat to me. Having power means not being afraid. It is the same on a global scale. A country with nukes can dictate terms to a country without them. I thanked her and took the tube. Then she offered to put some on for me. She squirted some lotion onto her fingers and began rolling it into my chest. It happened so suddenly, and I was so taken aback that I did not even think to protest. She caressed my stomach with her long, white fingers, then slid them upwards between my bikini-clad breasts. What? Wait! I sputtered as her moist eyes met mine. She was beautiful. Somehow... I found myself captivated by this woman more than ten years my elder. Hold still, she whispered in my ear. I nodded silently, unable to refuse. My body went limp, motionless, as if in a trance. Gently, carefully, she rubbed the lotion all over my entire body. I shouldn't have enjoyed it. And yet, I could not help myself. For a moment, I was spellbound. That woman is dangerous. I had better watch myself. Protecting one's health is an important part of any agent's job. But despite my best efforts, I have caught a cold. Now that I think about it, Mother Base's numbers are on the rise with soldiers coming from all different places and backgrounds. It is no wonder, then, 
that sooner or later someone would bring in a virus. That said, what I have got is just a common cold. The medical team said I'd need a few days rest, so I've been restricted to my room and put on bed rest. I thought I'd gotten used to not having anyone around to relate to, but at times like these, being alone is just miserable. All I could do is lay there and stroke Nuke's back, trying to take my mind off how bad I felt. Nuke just sat there, not making a sound. But I did have visitors, Amanda and Chico, Huey, Cecile, Miller, and a few of the soldiers I've become relatively close to. Amanda made me a soup with herbs she said were good for a cold. Miller told me to take it easy. I will sing you a lullaby, he said, then broke out a guitar and sang some incomprehensible song in Japanese. I did not need to understand the lyrics to know he is an awful singer. Then he said, you know what is good for a cold? Suppositories. Here, I'll show you. He began to take off his pants, so I threw my tissue box at him to make him go away. Then, Strange Love showed up, saying she had some miracle Indian cure. It has got eucalyptus extract, she said. It works best if you rub it into your chest. And then, she tried to take off my nightshirt. I whacked her with my pillow, and I got rid of her. Chico brought me a little flower in a cup. It had been growing in a little bit of earth that probably found its way on board stuck to something else. I found this on the deck. Here, you can have it. He tried to act nonchalant, but I am pretty sure he's got a crush on me. None of them understand. If they thought these little visits would cheer me up, they were wrong. Tonight, Snake himself came to my room. Like the rest, he believes I am just a schoolgirl and treats me as such. Why did you abandon your country, I asked him. Why create the MSF? Of course, I knew the answers already, but I wanted to hear it from him. As I had imagined, he was not exactly forthcoming. All he would say is that his country abandoned him because all he could do was fight. And that is why he needed the MSF, because that is all he is any good for. Then he said, fighting is the only thing I understand, but that does not mean I have got a grudge against those who believe in peace. I am not one of them, and I do not believe in peace. Conflict is in man's nature. We fight our enemies in order to survive. Maybe we are not so different after all, he and I. But that is exactly why I'm going to have to kill him. Or else he will have to kill me. When I stop and think about this wretched existence, being killed by a man like that suddenly does not seem like such a bad thing. Every month, Mother Base throws a party for all the soldiers whose birthdays fall in that month. There is something strange about a military organization having parties. Really though, it is just an excuse to drink and make noise. It is not easy to get alcohol in a fortress in the middle of the ocean. Most days they are training from dawn till dusk. They do not have time for things like drinking. That is why Snake and Miller came up with the idea to give everyone a chance to let loose. Obviously, a bunch of boars like that are not going to bother with blowing out candles on a cake. Rather, they sit there in a cloud of cigarette smoke, drink beer, eat meat, tell tasteless jokes, and swap crude insults about one another's hometowns. But it hardly ever breaks out into something serious. They talk up a storm, but they're just having fun. It is funny. You have got members of FSLN rubbing shoulders with the UCLA's, People who once would have considered the other mortal enemies. I wonder if that is what makes Big Boss so popular. In leaving their countries behind, they leave their hatred for other countries too. Miller seemed a little protective of me. Hope they're not being too crude, he said. But soon enough, he too was drunk. He yelled, come here and take a look at the real Kazuhira Miller. Then dropped his pants and mooned everybody the other soldiers burst out laughing. I have never seen such a crude, ridiculous party before. And yet, 
all these people laughing and acting the fool. Is this what they call peace? For some reason, I began to think about all that has happened since I came here. Fishing with Chico, cooking with Amanda and Cecile, playing soccer, having visitors when I caught a cold. When I stop and think about it, my time here has been the most peaceful of my life. But that is about to end. I cannot imagine he will be willing to negotiate. It seems I am to fight the legendary Big Boss. I do not know if I'll be able to beat him. But if I have to choose between death and defying Cypher, I will gladly choose death. The thought of dying does not scare me. But if I disobey my orders, the fear and despair awaiting me will be far worse than anything I can imagine. It was Cypher who took me in as an orphan, gave me food and a place to live. His orders may have been unreasonable, but I will never repay my debt entirely. It seems I have no choice. I must fight this man. I must fight Snake. Do you know Miller, Snake's right-hand man? Apparently has got at least one serious weakness. He is an insatiable womanizer. He does not bother me, most likely because he considers teenagers off-limits. But he has hit on every single one of the few female soldiers here at Mother Base. They ought to be telling him where to stick it, but end up falling for it so easily. I think some of it stems from the fact that he is actually not that bad looking. Anyway, today, that nasty habit got him in trouble. He and Snake got into one of their rare fights, and I was there to see it. They burst out of the showers completely naked, trading punches. I am no child. The sight of a naked man does not make me blush. But this was something else. Maybe this'll teach you, Snake yelled as he slammed his fists into Miller's chest. I heard later that apparently he'd been two-timing someone, and that same someone had gone to Snake with her troubles. As I see it, it is her own fault for letting herself be deceived like that. If she is too dumb to see through Miller's lies, then she got what she deserved. But this was not the first time it had happened, or the second. And Snake read Miller the riot act. Miller argued back, and what began as a shouting match turned into a fist fight. You son of a bitch, Miller yelled as he swung. Not bad, said Snake, smiling, but not good enough. And then he was back on the offensive. They had already been at it pretty hard in the showers, and their bodies were covered with bruises. Both of these men had been trained for war, their bodies deadly weapons. They were each bleeding from a dozen places. All this from a fist fight. Even so, it was far less gruesome than if they had given it their all. It was obvious that one of them would be dead were they fighting for real. Miller took another swing, yelling, Try this then! Snake parried, then responded in kind. But I could tell he was not aiming for anything vital. You are one tough bastard, boss, Miller muttered. A smile crept across his face as he caught his breath. And then they went right on fighting. Blood and sweat flew off their glistening bodies. It was combat without hatred or hostile intent. I had never seen violence like this before. And yet, it was more than just a friendly tussle. They were utilizing every technique they knew. It was not a sporting match. They were not playing by the rules. How could they keep this up? At last, the two men tired themselves out, and the bizarre scene came to an end. They looked at each other's battered bodies, and then burst out laughing, embracing and congratulating each other on a good fight. It all seemed so idiotic. I still cannot fathom such behavior. But somehow, I got the sense that for all his womanizing, Miller really only trusted one person, and that was Snake. There was no way I could ever come between the two of them. And at that thought, I began to feel as if I had lost. All of Mother Base is preparing for a festival. Since Snake and his soldiers spend so much time fighting, they are setting aside one day a year for peace and relaxation. I do not know all the details, but 
Apparently, that is what Snake and Miller decided. These soldiers love the idea, of course. There is so little fun to be had here that everybody looks forward to events like these. That is all well and good. But somehow, I got roped into getting on stage. Come on, we even both have peace in our name, said Miller. And Zadarnov, that old Ruski's name, has something to do with peace too, right? Hey, as long as we are having hey. a day of peace, we ought to get an act together. The Three Peace Band. I thought he was joking. He then proceeded to share his idea without bothering to check with me. And now, I am slated to sing. Apparently, he had heard me on the deck one day, and since then, he's wanted to form a band. Everybody's looking forward to it, so there is no way for me to back out now. I have never done anything like this, but it does feel kind of nice to know that people are looking forward to it. I mean, it cannot be any worse than Mueller's singing, but modifications to Zeke are already finalized, and I must complete my mission. Betray Sai for now, and I will face a fate far worse than death. Still, there is no need to put things in motion just yet. What difference would it make to just wait a little while longer? A whole day of peace. The mission can wait until after that. Can it not? I know I am only delaying the inevitable. When the day comes, one of us will have to die. Snake or me. But still, if I could just come up with some way to stall Cypher, at least until our day of peace. Ah, when did I start having thoughts like this? My cover is blown. They know nothing of Cypher or my true objective, but they know I am a spy. There is no more time left. I must act now. I must complete my mission. How did it come to this? All I wanted was three more days. Just three. Miller's already finished writing the song. It is called Love Deterrent. It is about a girl who cannot express her true feelings. I have been practicing. I am no pro, but I was pretty sure I would do a decent job. And know this. Cypher found out that Zeke was complete. He must have someone inside Mother Base besides me. Spinning his tightly wound web of control, leaving no room for individual will. Typical. When they found out Zeke was complete, I was ordered to execute the operation immediately. If I was going to enjoy just one day of peace, I had to ensure the plan could not move forward. I tried to sabotage Zeke. I thought by damaging the drive system, they would have no choice but to delay their plans. I waited until midnight, and then snuck into the hangar. There would be trouble if it looked like sabotage. I selected one of the drive system's load-bearing parts and carefully worked to warp its shape. The legs drive system requires a high degree of precision to operate. Even the smallest deviation would have done it. Then, Chico walked in. <laughs> Maybe it was one of those nights where he could not sleep. In any case, he saw me, panicked, and took off running. It would have been easy to kill him, but I could not. I know he likes me. It is not as if I would ever have an interest in a child like him, but I could not pull the trigger. Not at him, not in the back. Will he tell them? Or is there a chance he will keep it a secret? Protect me. No. He knows now. Knows I am not who he thought I was. He ran without even questioning what I was doing. There is no chance he does not know. And soon, all I have built here will end. And if Cypher has another agent among them, if he finds out I tried to sabotage Zeke, this place will no longer be my heaven. Then it is settled. I make my move now. Chico walked in before my sabotage was complete, so Zeke should still be operational. It might not run at full speed or power, but I do not have time to fix that. Without Zeke, I do not have a chance in hell of winning. I must act fast before Chico sounds the alarm. I knew it would come to this. <laughs> I just 
did not think it would be so soon. <laughs> it is time, Zeke. Metal Gear Zeke, activate. Big boss! Zadordov. I had to kill him. Huh. So much for a fugitive. Something's not right here. I'm thinking he had a friend. Someone inside MSF. Huh? What's going on? It's Zeke. It's moving. What? There's somebody inside. I can see them. Snake! Get up here! Pronto! <laughs> before you hurt somebody. Maybe I want to hurt somebody. What's going on? She's not herself. Oh, I am myself all right. My true self. Kaz, shut that thing down. I can't. The controls aren't responding. Then how's it moving? I made some modifications. This machine was meant to have a human pilot. Modifications? Paz, what are you... Never thought I'd be into machines, huh? Then Zidorov's escape was a diversion. Paz, what are you doing? I'm taking it back. Taking it back? Where? To our leaders. To Cypher. Cypher? This weapon is Cypher's creation. Pops, get down from there! Do not call me that. I am Pacifica Ocean. My name, my age, my mission. Cypher gave them all to me. My entire life has but one purpose. To carry out Cypher's plan. The nasty tobacco, the angel of peace crap, the whole teen with a dream routine. I am through with all of it. Pause. You can't. I told you not to call me that. It makes me want to puke. Everything is going exactly as planned. Now the real Peace Walker project is finally about to reach its goal. The real project? Once upon a time, there were two young men who idolized a hero called The Boss. One day, they suddenly lost the point of origin. This cipher, that was like a mother to them. Unable to come to terms with their sorrow, they each decided to carry on the will of their hero. But they could not agree on what that meant. In the end, they became bitter enemies. And the zero from which they both started was split into two. <laughs> 
And you have been on the wrong path ever since. There is no happily ever after waiting for you in the end. Unless... You obey the will of Cypher. Where does an army without borders call home? A state without borders, of course. A world without borders. A world without borders? The Cold War Order is about to collapse. The Age of Electronic Intelligence is about to begin. The NSA, CSS, NRO, DIA, etc., etc. The intelligence community that is long bickered amongst itself will be united in a world governed by electrons. Cypher will gather all information, watching over the world and guiding the will of its people, all while they remain blissfully unaware. There will be no one to oppose them. For the first time, the world will be ruled by a single will. Until the new order is in place, you and your army will be the force that protects it. You will be Cypher's deterrent, pulling the wool over the ice of the old order with your charisma and military prowess. Accept our offer, and we will allow you to retain control of MSF and Zeke. That's an offer. The boss threw down her gun, and with it, her life's call. You, her disciple, have never been able to do that. You are too afraid to let go. I was made to fight. I am a gun. Is that so? Then what do you call this? Is it a gun too? You are a lousy liar. Admit it. This thing is a monstrosity. A product of your own fear. But not Cypher. Cypher thought of something different. Cypher is going to control guns. Control guns? That is right. Not deter. Control. It is the ultimate approach to the illusion of peace. Control power. You're gonna be disappointed. Then we are done. We are done. Thank you for playing. Better luck next time. The offer is rescinded. And now the ultimatum. Zeke is already in nuclear strike mode. What? I'm taking the weapon you built and using it to launch a nuclear strike on the east coast of the United States. You're insane. What are you after? But wait. Here is your consolation prize. We are about to show the world just how dangerous a gang of outlaws, an army without borders, can be. You and your men will become pariahs, and you will be wiped off the face of the earth. Rather than heroes, you will be seen as a well-armed extremist cult prone to indiscriminate outbursts of nuclear aggression. You will give rise to a new world order, an age of deterrence defined by a fear of extremist cult influence. Do you like the picture I am painting? Big boss. When all is said and done, peace is nothing but a fantasy. A game is a game. You either win or you lose. All you can do is fight. Stop me if you can. The peace sign is the V of victory. Say, peace? All right, are you ready for some J-pop? You ready to go full anime? Uh, I really hope I have the Zeke parts on this save. I think we should. Stealth. Survival. Combat. Here we go.
think she only has standard upgrades. I don't think she has any jetpack or anything. Went straight for another one? What the hell? I don't think I've ever seen that before. MGS2 style.
would have thought that little girl was working against us. Tell me about it. She had everybody fooled, me included. I can't believe I didn't pick up on anything. Snake, there's no point in beating yourself up over the past. But hey, maybe you should put in some practice against Zeke in case this sort of thing ever happens again. In any case, I need to go talk to Dr. Strangelove. Zeke still isn't ready. Huey! How's it going? How does Zeke look? The attitude control AI had a backup, so it should be able to walk. Really? Well, that's good. Beyond that, it's up to the creator. Stop! Don't come any closer, Doctor. There's something I've been meaning to ask you. Do you... do you despise me? Doctor? Are you asking me out? No, no. <laughs> Not at all. I... No? Hmm. Pity. Because I've just had my heart broken by someone else. What? I only like those who can stand on their own. If you fancy me, then come walk with me. Who knows what miracles might happen. Love is blind after all. Take your time. I'll be waiting. Snake! 
That name Pass mentioned at the end, Cypher, it's a code. It means empty. It also means... Zero. A world of electronic intelligence, built on codes. And at the center of it all, a zero. Kaz. Uh, look boss, I owe you an apology. Hear me out, okay? <sighs> sure. I, uh, knew Paz and the Professor. I knew who they really were all along. Cuz... I used them. I suppose you were the one that brought them to Columbia in the first place, huh? Guilty as charged. Paz wasn't just CIA, you know. She was working for the KGB, too. And for this Cypher group. In other words, she was a triple agent. You knew all of this. Wait, let me finish. Listen, MSF never would have gotten this big if it weren't for them. This mercenary business we built, someday it's going to be a new driving force in the world economy. <sighs> is that your goal all along? The Cold War is not going to last forever. Sooner or later, it's going to give way to an era of regional conflicts and terrorism. A paradigm shift from counter-communism to counter-terrorism in the new age. Armies won't be tied to states, and war will become a business. We'll be a valuable commodity. There'll be clients all over the world who need our services. MSF is only the beginning. What we're creating here is a revolution in itself. Am I right? Cuz... It's not going to be that easy. What do you mean? This whole Peace Walker thing has left our mark on the history of the Old Order. We've put ourselves on the radar of intelligence agencies and governments east and west. The whole world probably knows about us now. Including that Cypher outfit. We've let ourselves interfere with the times, with the Cold War system of deterrence. We're an army without a flag. We weren't supposed to take sides in international affairs, but we did. I see your point. So what happens to us now? We'll be hunted. Not everybody's gonna be happy with us, huh? You're damn right. We upset the global military balance of power. And these people would rather our army without borders not exist at all? They're gonna come knocking real soon. There's no turning back now. We're a wrench in the old system of deterrence. As long as the times refuse to change, we're gonna make a hell of a racket. Then who are we gonna fight? The establishment. Anybody who tries to restore the old balance wants to snuff us out of existence. Which establishment? It won't be a particular country or ideology that hunts us. Who then? We are gonna be fighting the biggest beast of all. The Times. Ten years ago, the Times rejected the boss and killed her. And now, we are the ones being tested. Will the Times erase us? Or work with us? It's gonna be a lonely battle. No good or evil. No winners or losers. Business will have to wait. The question we have to ask ourselves now is, can we survive long enough to see the 21st century? I'm with you, boss. We'll see how it turns out, together.
forsake our countries. We will leave our motherlands behind us and become one with this earth. We have no nation, no philosophy, no ideology. We go where we're needed, fighting not for country, not for government, but for ourselves. We need no reason to fight. We fight because we are needed. We will be the deterrent for those with no other recourse. We are soldiers without borders, our purpose defined by the era we live in. We will sometimes have to sell ourselves and services. If the times demand it, we'll be revolutionaries, criminals, terrorists. And yes, we may all be headed straight to hell. But what better place for us than this? It is our only home, our heaven, and our hell. This is our heaven. We did it. We made it to the end. Or did we? Because we might still have some tapes to do. Hold on a second. What's up, fools? Rassel. Chrome. Let me just check my stream elements here. Make sure I have no one else to thank. The last name I see here is Nozka. Thank you again, Nozka. I think I thanked you earlier, but thank you again. Let's see, we have some post-mission tapes to do here. Of course, the final, 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 final twist. The phone call. You know how in MGS 1, MGS 3, you get the post-mission phone call twist with Ocelot? Well, this game also has something similar. But to unlock it, you have to do all of the missions, all of the side ops. And then you unlock the game's final twist. For the true post-credits twist. But... First we'll do uh, a couple of the other tapes as well. Chico has one. Chico, I heard you saw Paz trying to sabotage Zeke before she activated. I should have stopped her. If only I hadn't run away. I could have captured her before she got inside. If I'd done that, she'd still be here. She was carrying a gun. Probably trained to use it too. Don't blame yourself. You couldn't have stopped her anyway. You were unarmed. I could have at least talked to her. If I'd promised not to tell anyone, Paz wouldn't have gone and done what she did. It's just, it's just I was so shocked. I, I, I panicked. I ran away. Chico, when you saw Paz, she was trying to sabotage it, right? Huh? Well, yeah. And right after that, she took control of it, tried to make me surrender. Something doesn't add up. Why would she sabotage Zeke when she was about to use it against me? What? Her actions were inconsistent. Even for a spy, if she wanted to destroy Zeke, she could have done it and run away. But if her goal was to steal Zeke, she'd have no motive to sabotage it. Hey. I don't know. Maybe your seeing her caused her to change her plan. Uh, I don't get it. So a lot of this stuff obviously leads directly into Ground Zeroes. Chico and Paz. The feelings Chico has for Paz. Do you think Paz was planning to double-cross Cypher? Without Zeke, she wouldn't have any way to threaten you. If that were the case, she could have told me all that from the beginning. She wouldn't have had to try and sabotage it. I guess so. But that was the day before peace day. Boss was going to sing in a band. I couldn't wait to hear her. What if she wasn't going to double cross them? Maybe she just wanted to at least be able to enjoy that. Chico. I knew it. If only I hadn't run away. If I talked to her. Promise I wouldn't tell anybody. Don't second guess yourself. Think about who might have been hurt if you kept quiet. Yeah, but... Besides... We don't know for sure she's dead. She was ejected into the ocean, and she had scuba equipment with her. Yeah. Stop beating yourself up over the past, Chico. 
Put your hope in the future. The past is the past, but the future is up to you. Right, boss. Hey, what's up, Nunia? Remember that habit Paz had, Snake? How she always had her index finger on her upper lip like this? Yeah, yeah. It bugged me ever since we first met her. Never figured her for a snuff user. I can't believe we never noticed. She used the kind where you keep a pouch of leaf in your upper jaw, let it absorb through your gums. She might not have been used to it. Probably used her finger to keep it in place. How could Paz... <sighs> We were going to start a band together. She was posing as a KGB agent, too. She must have put on the act to get close to Galvez. Wonder how much Coleman knew. But the whole time she was working for some organization called Cypher. Huh. Cypher. Ring any bells, cuz. Cypher. Cypher. It means code, or zero in Arabic numerals. Zero. Does that mean something to you? Not sure. Hmm. You know, Cypher and zero were basically the same word. It's a linguistic redundancy. The word stems from the Sanskrit shunya. It corresponds to the Buddhist concept of emptiness. In Buddhism, shunya means hollow. It supposedly refers to something that's swollen and empty on the inside. A big swollen emptiness. Just like outer space. Okay, now we'll do the final twist. The phone call. It's me. Smoothly? Naturally? No. Big Boss doesn't know the truth. No, Langley hasn't decided what to do yet. Their hands are full with their own mess. True. Lubyanka is in the same boat. Yes. Other eyes continue to watch, but no sign of contact so far. Exactly. It's a non-state army to use however they want. They probably decided there's no sense in wiping them out just yet. Better to make use of them. Indeed, they have. There's a site near Angola. And we fully validated the AI as well. Agreed. In the end, a machine is just that. A machine. Sigan was right. It seems it's time for a change in approach. Machines are best suited to specialize in high-level data processing. Yes, of course. Speaking of which, any news on the Suns? Two. Already? Really? But they're strictly an insurance policy, yes? Hmm. So that's the idea. I wonder how Big Boss will respond. Yes, but I'm only interested in the business angle. Like I said before, I'm neither an enemy nor an ally. I'm merely a business partner. Don't forget it. Yes, I'll be in touch. My dear Zero. So there we have it. Miller on the phone to Zero. He knows all about the clones behind Snake's back. He knows all about Zero's plan to create the AIs. Uh, or really Sigan's plan. We learned that it was Sigan's idea to set up the AIs. And yeah, pretty big twist. <laughs> so another thing that's worth going over here, I think, is, you know, at the at the end of when we destroy Zeke and Miller and Snake have that conversation, and Miller confesses to knowing about Paz and Galvez. He says, I know who they really were uh, all along. And that they came from this cipher group. When we get to the scene in Ground Zeroes, you know, you know there's that bit of dialogue that people always get confused about in Ground Zeroes? Where Miller is like, you know, now I'm wondering which was the real Paz and which was the lie. And people always say, but wait, shouldn't Miller already... No. 
but I think even in Peace Walker, it's it's suggested, or you know, a part of Miller's ruse is that he, you know, he tells Snake that he knew where they came from, but I do, I think he's still trying to act as if he doesn't really know the full gist, right? In this in this conversation about Cipher. He still acts as if he, you know, he still acts surprised about Paz's turn. So I think the idea is that he knew that Paz and Galvez were coming from this organization, but he didn't know that Paz's whole persona was fake. Of course, in reality, he does. But at the end of the game there, at the end of chapter five, I think he's just half telling, he's just telling Snake half of the truth. You know, I, I knew that they, it's kind of misleading when he says, because the, the line, I knew who they really were all along, suggests that, oh, he knew that Paz was, you know, that her whole personality was a fake all along. But in this call, it, it's, 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 you know, it's, uh, it's implied otherwise. Just listen to this one again. How could Paz... <laughs> We were going to start a band together. You know? She was posing as a KGB agent, too. She must have put on the act to get close to Galvez. Wonder how much Coleman knew. But the whole time she was working for some organization called Cypher. Huh. Cypher. Ring any bells, cuz. Cypher. Cypher. It means code, or zero in Arabic numerals. Zero. Does that mean something to you? Not sure. Hmm. You know, Cypher and zero were basically the same word. It's a linguistic redundancy. The word stems from the Sanskrit shunya. It corresponds to the Buddhist concept of emptiness. In Buddhism, shunya means hollow. It supposedly refers to something that's swollen and empty on the inside. A big swollen emptiness. Just like outer space. Yeah, so when we get to that line in Ground Zeroes, I don't think that it's really contradicting Peace Walker. I think just Peace Walker in the first place doesn't make it so clear. Maybe in the in the original Japanese it's a bit clearer and it's an issue with more an issue with the translation. But yeah, Kaz still acting here as if he doesn't really as if he didn't really know the full truth about Paz. And of course feigning that he doesn't know anything really about Cypher. He just knew that they came from Cypher. But there we have it. So we could also do the Eva tapes. But, ugh. They're a bit of a slog. I don't always do them. I'm not the biggest fan of them. You get some extra backstory on the boss's mission to kill the sorrow. You get to see how that went down. But, uh, I think I'm going to leave it for today. Okay, let's switch over to Ground Zeroes. Uh, give me just a minute while I switch over, while I switch consoles. Uh, I'll play some tunes while you wait. 